How long does it take to attract $37 million? In my case, it took as long as a TED Talk, 18 minutes. And I did it in a bubble. This is a bubble. And like every bubble, when inflated with air, it eventually for those who are wondering, this was not a condom. <laughs> but the bubble I'll be speaking about today is not filled with air. It's full of money, mania, fear, and greed. The bubble I have in mind is technological, in particular, cryptocurrency bubble. But what is cryptocurrency? I know that might sound something out of a sci-fi movie, but simply speaking, it's a form of digital money. Some experts believe it to be the greatest digital invention since the internet, while others call it the worst technology bubble of our generation. And I know what you're thinking right now. Here's another young economist who's going to come in here, talk complex economic terms that nobody understands. And trust me, not even economists themselves understand it. I will not. I'm not an economist. I'm just a man who managed to turn the technology bubble into the opportunity of a lifetime. And I think you can do it too. My story may resemble a little bit of staying in the eye of a hurricane. Everything around you is hectic, but if you manage to follow the storm correctly, you'll be safe. Two years ago, me and two of my friends co-founded a cryptocurrency company. After a long nine months of hard work, we were sitting in a tiny, tiny office, no bigger than the kitchen, sweating last day of summer. It wasn't so much from the heat, even though we couldn't afford air conditioning at that time. It was more because of the fear and the excitement of the unknown. We were about to launch our ICO, an initial coin offering. Simply speaking, it's a form of startup crowdfunding. You announce your idea to the web, and people from all around the world can finance it via cryptocurrency. We have set the maximum amount of funds to be received at $37 million. It was a balance between a lucky number and a calculated effort. However, we did not know if we were going to raise any money at all. We thought that the crowd sale might last days, perhaps even weeks. But when the clock hit 2 PM and the sales started, people started flooding to participate, sharing the same vision. And 18 minutes later, the goal was fully reached, $37 million. Actually, we were oversubscribed by $100, by $100 million. And yes, I'm, I am losing sleep over that sometimes. <laughs> we were flabbergasted. At that date, we got more funds than we could ever dream of. People were calling to congratulate, saying, you're a millionaire now. My mom was, of course, shedding the tears of joy. We were all over the news. At that moment, we looked at each other in that tiny office and just realized how big the cryptocurrency bubble was. But what is that mysterious bubble? By definition, an economic bubble is an extremely rapid appreciation of a certain asset, which is then followed by a sudden crash. Simply speaking, it's investing or paying for stuff much more than its real value is. Where can this happen? Well, people can be very creative here. From company stocks to real estate to gold, economic bubbles even happened in the stuffed animals market. But the perfect example for me of an economic bubble is something that happened in the 17th century Netherlands. Back then, to get a rare tulip seed, people would pay absurd amounts of money, sometimes even, even more than their houses were worth. Let me explain why. Let's assume I'm selling this tulip for $2.3. But the gentleman in the third row in the gray blazer, he says, I wanted more. I'll pay five for that. And the lady in the red dress, beautiful red dress, by the way, she says, I'll buy it for 10. I will now, of course, set the price at $10. But the trick begins when an expert comes in and says, it's a very rare tulip. It takes a long time to grow. There's only 100 of them in the world. And the girls, the girls adore them. 
suddenly the perceived value of this tulip starts growing exponentially. And that's where the investment sharks start smelling the blood and start coming into the game. They don't care about the tulip itself. What they care about is making money. That's why they start offering bets. For example, I bet that the price of this tulip grows to $1,000. Then they bring in their friends, the media, which starts forecasting. We think that the real value of this tulip is $5,000. The funny thing is that I can bet that most of you no longer even remember what was the starting price of this tulip. It hasn't left my hands. It's still $2.3. But because of the media, to arouse the imagination of a simple investor to come in late, people, people no longer care. So you see, a very similar thing happened with cryptocurrencies. At one point of time, Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency, used to cost just a few dollars. Then, after a gradual increase to 100, 200, 300, 1,000, in December of 2017, it went up to as high as $20,000. So for me, as an avid blockchain enthusiast, the signal was clear. It was time to act. It's time to manifest my dream and to create a cryptocurrency company because such an opportunity does not come very often. Was my decision based on pure guesswork? Well, I was fortunate, but it wasn't all luck. You see, every bubble follows a certain pattern. Of course, it's easy to spot one when it's already big or already over. But to notice it on time, you have to look for certain indications and don't give in to the hysteria. And in the times of a bubble, there is a lot of it. The typical life cycle of a bubble consists of five stages. The first stage is called the displacement, or that's at least how the economists call it. I rephrased it to as simple as the Coke and Mentos stage. <laughs> Have you ever seen it? You put a little Mentos in a Coke and it starts erupting in, in, like crazy. The same with economic bubbles. There needs to be a spark, a catalyst. Unfortunately, yes, that is sometimes being created artificially. And then boom, the price is on the rise. Same thing happened with crypto. The people, the media, we're all agitating one another that it is a revolutionary investment, that it is a great technology, basically free money while watching Netflix. So the more people bought, the higher the prices went. And that's where we come to the second stage, which is called boom, or how I call it, the car hailing app stage. I came up with this term in New Orleans. My taxi driver was a lovely 59-year-old lady. She, she was named Tracy. We got into small talk. Uh, I told her that I work in the tech industry. And imagine my surprise when she said, which cryptocurrency should I buy? Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Monero? On TV last week, I heard that Bitcoin is going to go up to $25,000. Not the real voice, by the way. That is a big warning sign right there. Just a few months ago, nobody had even heard about these currencies. And now people, regular people, they just wanted to invest. They did not know what the technology was all about. They just wanted in. And that's where the prices continue to rise. So we come to the third stage, which is called euphoria, or I am Warren Buffett. For those who don't know this wonderful man, he's regarded as one of the best investors of our time. And every person who managed to buy an asset at a low price, and then it went to three times more, five times more, thousand times more, of course they would think that they're investment genius. Of course they would think that they're on their way to Forbes billionaires list. So they would buy more, much more, way more than they can afford. Maxing out their credit cards, take out loans, going all in. So the same investment sharks smell the blood again, and they start selling. That's where we come to the fourth stage, which is called profit-taking, or how I call it, I need a Lamborghini. That's driven in either by some fear coming into the industry, or maybe just a simple, humble, first-world need to drive a Lamborghini. Nonetheless, when people sell, the price drops. And that's where we come to the fifth and final stage, which is called panic, 
or MTI TGT double SB. Maybe this isn't the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> this stage means that the same media outlets that said, this is the best investment of the decade, now they're saying, get the hell out. The price drops, the biggest losers are those who got in late, like Tracy. That's where the dark things happen. She loses a lot of money. She cannot repay her debts anymore. She is in a financial hole. That stretches out to be responsible not only for yourself, but also for your family. The perfect illustration of this are these beautiful people. They're called the Bitcoin family. And yes, you've heard it right. Uh, they have sold everything that they've got, minimized their expenses, just to invest everything in Bitcoin. An absolute all in, fear of missing out, a blind belief in a technology that you don't necessarily understand. The popular belief is that the Bitcoin family bought Bitcoin somewhere between the car healing app stage and I am Warren Buffett stage, which implies that they have lost a lot of money since Bitcoin right now trades around $4,000, 80% less than its all time high. But bubbles, bubbles are not all painted in dark colors. Bubbles can be a time of great opportunities. You see, cryptocurrency bubble is not the first one, it's not the last one, it's actually not even unique. Just 20 years ago, something very similar happened, and it was called the dot-com bubble. It was named after a large number of internet projects raising insane amounts of money. Frankly, if you had a dot-com domain and a half-baked idea, you could get millions of dollars for your company. Following this flawed formula, of course, many of those projects went bust in a spectacular fashion. And in a few years, they have been long forgotten. And the investors who put money into those companies, they lost a lot of wealth. It was a harsh lesson to learn. However, at the same time, something amazing happened. For every two or 300 companies that failed, there was one, maybe two companies that not only survived, but became the backbone of the internet as we know it. You're definitely going to recognize their names. eBay, PayPal, Amazon. Those are the companies that not only had a great idea, but also applied age-old business principles to make it work. And the investors who stuck with those companies through tough times, and trust me, there were a lot of turbulent times in, in, in the bubble, now they are reaping humongous rewards. The perfect illustration of this is something that happened on the 7th of June, 1999. Kleiner Perkins and Sequoia Capital, two of the lar largest venture capital firms in Silicon Valley, invested $25 million into an up-and-coming IT startup. The analysts told that it's insane, but the company that they have invested in is the company that you use their services every single day. Google. So the same situation follows us. Journalists say that it's ludicrous that we raised $37 million on an idea. But we know that it's not the technology and not the hype around the technology that wins. It's the age-old business fundamentals of delivering value. So the pitfall of economic bubbles lies not in mathematics. It lies in the core of human psychology. Our desire to put in little effort and receive great reward. Bubbles expose our greed, selfishness, need for excess, and it shows that it leads to dangerous situations affecting not only ourselves, our families, our loved ones, but also the society at large. However, a bubble is also a time of great opportunities. In the right hands, it can become a great tool. The United States became the giant of the internet with the help of a dot-com bubble. Holland is still being known as the tulip country because of the tulip mania. 
So the most important thing is to educate yourselves. Know how these bubbles work and you'll be able to protect yourselves because they are going to continue. It's in our DNA. Do the right thing at the right moment and perhaps you'll be even greatly rewarded. And yes, a large fortune, sometimes it can be made in the time span of a TED talk, but sometimes it can be lost just as fast. So be aware, be safe, and most of all, don't be too greedy. That's how you will not only survive, but will also thrive. Thank you.